Did space and time really have a cause? Craig says this question has a very simple answer, but I disagree. See, the problem with this question is that although space and time become useless concepts when there's nothing to describe, describing anything without them causes any concept to become unpatently absurd. Don't believe me? I'll show you. Now, the first question I'll ask is, can there truly be something existing outside of space? If so, then where does it exist? Because if it exists nowhere, then that's the same thing as not existing, right? But if it exists somewhere, then surely it must have a direction, a shape, a size, maybe even a distance between it and another object. And I think we all know that it would have a point where it exists. But surely, if it has those properties, it's within space. Because if it's not, it's something very much like space. So close to space, we might as well call it that, because otherwise it would be special pleading. Now, I get where you're going. But surely time isn't needed. An object must be able to exist outside of time. After all, an infinite series of events is impossible. Yes. But, what does it mean to be timeless? If it means that you do nothing but sit around all day, then what's the point of it even being there in the first place? And if it is still able to perform actions, then what is there to distinguish between said actions besides time? If it must be something very much like time, then why not call it time? This demonstrates the problem of space and time requiring a cause. Because that cause would have to be something which exists. But if it exists, then it must be within space and time, because otherwise it reduces to absurdity. However, an object within space and time causing space and time to exist is equally absurd. It seems to me that space and time can't have a cause. But why is that? Perhaps that's because without them, the entire idea of a cause is a complete fiction.